It's important to look after all our trees, our country, our animals, our insects, our plants and our environment. But in a country of fire and flood, how do we prepare for climate change and the extreme events we know are coming? We're in a warming, unstable climate. Extreme events are a part of life, but they're getting more frequent and more severe. It's a daunting question for Australian health systems, and it's this question the Healthy Environments and Lives, or HEAL, network of researchers and academics under the directorship of Professor Satiris Vardalakis, Professor in Global Environmental Health, is ready to answer. The HEAL network is involved in interdisciplinary research, which focuses on health, the environment and climate change. And a lot of our research involves health services, but also population health. Research stemming from a coalition of 100 investigators and around 30 institutions from across Australia, focusing on solutions for a more resilient and sustainable health system. The biggest strength that we have will be to be working across jurisdictions, within jurisdictions, within health care. Researchers, communities, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander organisations, health practitioners, health service managers and also environmental managers across the country. It is such a big collaboration of people to come together to share important knowledge on climate change. It is so important that we follow Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander protocols to share the knowledge that we have and hold as primary custodians for this land and for the environment. Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander knowledge and wisdom is the cornerstone of the Hill Network. We respectfully bring together this tradition and knowledge with data science, epidemiology, risk communication to improve the health and well-being of communities and also improve the resilience and sustainability of the health sector more broadly. And the Hill Network is already transforming data into policy. Professor Zhao Chi Feng's work is already helping to mitigate the pressure of chronic illness on primary care by way of the 30% urban tree canopy benchmark already incorporated into urban plans around Sydney. My research shows that we need 30% or more tree canopies in our neighbourhood uh, to help to reduce the risk of developing type 2 diabetes, uh, high blood pressure and depression, and also potentially help to reduce the loneliness as well. While ideas like nature prescriptions improve patient outcomes. One third of Australia that actually does not spend even two hours awake in nature. But 82% of Australians uh, from the survey actually said they would like to give a go if a health professional issued them a nature prescription. These are solutions directed at a health sector struggling with significantly increased demand and operating in the new reality of a post-pandemic world. We saw workforce burnout, poor retention of staff. Um, we've seen um, an inc massive increase in hospital waiting lists, um, increases in um, you know, um, ill health, so people not attending um, care appointments because of affordability issues. And while the Australian health system continues to perform well against the rest of the world, those with eyes on the horizon have a clear message. The climate's changing, it's getting warmer, and the rate of the population having to live through extreme events is accelerating, especially for bushfires but also floods, also heat waves. All of these things are going to impact our health services. I think health systems leaders have been signalling the alarm um, for quite a number of years now. For Associate Professor Rebecca Haddock, a positive path forward is clear. A more positive future is one that will be co-designed with both communities um, and service providers and government coming together to actually inform what um, good care will look like. Um, and we're going to reduce chronic Ill the incidence of chronic illness. Um, we're going to start to mitigate some of the impacts of climate change on the health system. According to Professor Faye Johnston, the wider health effects of bushfires have as significant an impact as the deadly fire front. Smoke is not nearly as deadly, but it affects way more people. It affects millions. It travels thousands of kilometres. It actually kills more people than fire fronts. The estimate our team made, for example, during Black Summer in Australia, was that more than 400 people died before they should because of the effects of the smoke. Almost 80% of our population were affected by smoke and even small increases in smoke and air pollution can precipitate serious health events. 
In any event, the HEAL network continues its work, finding solutions for the transition away from low-value, high-carbon care. We need to reduce the carbon footprint of our health services. It's currently around 7% of the total carbon uh, footprint of Australia. And also we need to make health services more resilient to extreme events and environmental change. Make sure that health services can address the increasing demand in relation to physical health problems, but also mental health problems. The scientists, the health workers, the anthropologists that are working in this space, people that are climate change experts, these are the people that want to help us to make sure that our country and the knowledge that we hold for our country is shared.